Hi, in this video I'm going to give you five reasons why you should shoot with small apertures. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. I'm now pleased to say that my t-shirts are on sale over on the website at firstmanphotography.com. Please do head over there, have a look and pick one up if you like what you see. Okay, so small apertures with big F numbers generally have a pretty bad reputation as we're conditioned to believe that we all want to be chasing down those big apertures, those big prime lenses that are expensive and often difficult to use. When we hear about a lens with a huge aperture like F1 or F1.2, we immediately assume that it is a quality lens. And often that is the case, but there's nothing wrong with shooting with a smaller aperture and it works well in many situations. One of the issues people often talk about with small apertures is diffraction. Now, this does cause a small reduction in quality at the small apertures and higher stop numbers, but really you're gonna have to be pixel peeping to get down in there and see the difference in quality. Small apertures will still produce beautiful images even when printed and blown up very large. So let's get into the five reasons why I think you should use them. First off is that with small apertures, you get a big depth of field. And this is great for several situations, such as shooting landscape photography, where it's an absolute essential when you want to get your foreground interest and your background interest in focus, using that small aperture will allow you to do that. Also, when you're shooting portraits in a group situation, you want to make sure that you get everybody in focus because there's nothing worse than seeing a group portrait where one person towards the front has their eyes nicely in focus and a person standing slightly back is out of focus because it really shows that it's not a quality image. So stopping down to a smaller aperture will allow you to achieve getting all those eyes in focus. It's also a vital trick for macro photography and product photography, where if, when you get really in close to your subject, you're going to have a much smaller depth of field. And we can see this in macro photography very easily. So we can minimize this effect by stopping down to a much smaller aperture. Some macro lenses even go down to f32 which will let you get as much of your subject in focus as possible, even when you're nice and close in. The smaller aperture means less light is getting through your lens into the sensor. So what that means is to get a proper exposure, especially in low light conditions, is that we need to use a longer exposure. We can use this to our advantage though, to capture long exposure photography, even without the use of filters. And this picture that I took fairly recently of the London Eye, I took it without any filter whatsoever and it's about a 2 minute and 45 second picture taken at f22 and it really shows that you can get some great shots by utilising the small aperture. Shooting with these minuscule apertures really enhances the star or halo effect coming from bright sources of light shining straight at your camera. This can include artificial sources of light like you saw in that previous picture, or like in this sunset shot, it works well when shooting straight at the sun. There are filters that simulate this effect, but it's nice to be able to do it naturally with the aperture blades in your lens. Number four is that smaller apertures often produce sharper images. Apertures at f5.6 and f8, which are still pretty small apertures, will produce on most lenses the sharpest image that that lens can produce. You'll start to lose, you will start to lose sharpness once you go beyond f16, but again, you're really going to have to be pixel peeping to really notice the difference. It's a good fact to know when you want to maximise the quality of your gear, especially for studio portrait and product photography. <laughs> Number five is that it will improve your skills. Thinking about the aperture you use will go a long way to really controlling your exposure. And that's an important step to take your photography to the next level. It will help you towards the goal of shooting in manual mode. And this is a step towards having total control over your camera. For me, this is an important step because it frees you up to really focus on your art 
and capture beautiful images. Okay, so please give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you about how much you use small apertures and whether you agree with me or not. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. There's videos going up on a Wednesday and on a Sunday, and I really think it can help you take your photography to the next level. I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out. Absolutely roasting in here today. I hope it hasn't affected the sound quality with the window open. If it has, I apologize for that. But with these video lights and the heat today, it's absolutely sweltering.